Carmen San Diego, season four, episode six, the Egyptian decryption caper. And while there are some amazing moments, I mean that cliffhanger stuff with the chief, it's it's great. Oh man, do I love it. But there again, three storylines that are just jammed up into this episode just to get it out there. And it breaks my heart because there should have been more another season. Because in the very beginning of this episode, <laughs> they just solve a caper within like 30 seconds just so they can get to the next part. I feel like there was a whole story there. There was something there with Cleo and, you know, the, the, her figuring out the, the, the inscription and the riddles and everything. But they just kind of just slosh right through it just so they can get to Egypt. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it so much. But, you know, when I guess when they say, hey, you got three episodes left and you have all these ideas, you got to put them out there, I guess. Uh, Chase is awesome. I, I can't believe I'm saying that. Chase is pretty freaking awesome in this episode. And Julia is working with Carmen. Pretty cool stuff. But again, we get, we get just jam packed with things that I felt like th there's there's other episodes here. But we open up and they're in the jungles and stuff. And we got Cere Cerebellum and um, apparently, I guess, Mind Bomb's a... A decryptor guy i did they ever mention that i guess maybe i guess he would be good at that but remember how they got the eye patch and i guess it let him hear and there's some uh, oh some tooth and that's what the next uh treasure thing that's going to lead him to the next part that that's within literally five seconds of the episode wow that there was an adventure there something so, so obviously happened but we just literally skip right over it and carmen grabs the tooth and takes off that's um that's pretty terrible that's awful. It's, uh, could you imagine telling a story where you literally had a whole episode solved in seconds? Carmen doesn't even fight them. I like how she just gets the tooth and takes off and they're like, oh, go after her. Like, what are we going to do? We can't get her. But I guess they show off these new, uh, drone thing that they have. So now they have a drone. Oh, the little red drone they had. I forgot that they gave it a name, but, um, they, they, Vile has a drone now. So yeah, uh, Carmen contacts, uh, Julia says, Hey, here's the next clue. Come check it out. I guess there's two sets of hieroglyphics. There's hieroglyphics, which are older Then there's like these symbols that were used like in the middle ages. So this, this artifact has inscriptions from two different time periods. And she notices that she thinks it's pretty cool. And she's going to, uh, you know, she's kind of likes helping out Carmen cause it's fun. And she gets to do like her hieroglyphic, you know, look up things and do the uh, research and stuff. Little does Carmen know she's being watched. And they got a picture of Julia like, oh, she has her own code cracker. We're going to basically go after Julia. Vile's evil. They're awful. They're terrible. But um, I guess this whole time, Zack and Ivy weren't with her or Shadow Sun. Because remember, Shadow Sun got in the water. So I guess he's kind of recovering from that. So it's just Carmen. And that kind of, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh, something bad's going to happen to Carmen. Because she's going to be all alone. And there's going to be no one to watch her back. Even though Zack and Ivy aren't the best, you know, I want to say fighters or be able to do, but having more hands, more eyes on, it's always better, but she was going solo. It kind of, I knew something bad was going to happen. Um, I do like how, uh, she has a player and Julia on the computer at the same time. So they can kind of talk to each other, which is pretty cool. And <laughs> it's, uh, that's when we get the next, the next stop's going to be in Egypt. They should, they do the, um, you know, the edutainment talk about the Pharaohs. They built the pyramids. Um, they were used as uh, tombs for the great kings, the pharaohs, and they had all their stuff that they would need in the afterlife. But of course, over the years, people have raided these tombs, so there's not a lot of um, stuff left over. But since there's such a vast network of secret caves and everything underneath and secret passages, there could be something more, which is probably where this tooth's going to lead. Then they're talking and they talk about like, oh, okay, there's the the, the scarab, which is also another very uh, popular hieroglyphic. And, you know, it's the... The scarab is pushing the sun across the sky, all that kind of fun stuff. And um, <laughs> I thought this was kind of funny. Now you know who to call for help with your history homework, player. Wait, I thought you two went to school together. It's complicated. They didn't go to school together, but they were in school at the same time, but they're totally different ages. Like Carmen's way older than, than player. But that was kind of funny because like there's a lot to explain here, but it's not really worth getting into. I thought that was cute. Then like, okay, you know, well, when you get more information, hey, go ahead, head off to Egypt. Then when you get there, I'll give you more information. Oh, Julia's doing her stuff. If she gets a knock at the door, it's the freaking cleaners. They're going to get her. And these guys are pros. And she's just, even though she's probably had hand-to-hand -hand combat training, like defensive tactics, it's not going to take on these guys. Uh, we get to Egypt. And uh, get it's um, Cleo's. 
you know, this is her home turf. You know how like with um, Maelstrom in the, in the Netherlands and everything. So now it's her turn to have like her area. And here we go. We got, um, so it's going to be, it's her and Tigress. And Tigress is looking pretty cute. I like this little outfit she has on, little little uh, midriff going on. Pretty cool. I like it. She's still a mean, nasty girl, but just a pretty cute outfit for her. She's like looking around and stuff and, ooh, kitty cats. She's like, it's just a stupid knickknack. Don't worry about it. Then, you know, the stereotype. <laughs> oh, I thought you Egyptians, you know, liked uh, worship cats. She's like, yeah, in the past, you know. It's almost like a, um, not necessarily like a, you, you need to learn some new things. Not every little thing that you learned of the past is, is true now. But I do like this little, this little gag too. I am not a day over 35. <laughs> and even she rolls her eyes. We all did like. Honey, you were 35, 25 years ago. <laughs> At the very least, she's in her late 40s. She's probably like 50 something, but plastic surgeries and Botox and everything else makes her look a lot younger. She's a very attractive older woman, but there's no way in hell you're in your 30s. No way. So they get to the uh, they're where they were going and there's Julia captured, black bag on her head and everything. And I do like how Julia played it stupid she's like i don't know what what are we what did you capture me where are we oh i'm gonna need you to help you decrypt something i've been looking at your um your little side activities she's like i have no idea what you're talking about but then she shows her the picture you know of carmen and everything she's like ah oh, damn they got me and they, they're not messing around like you're gonna help us do this or you know we're gonna get to carmen and she's like i don't like this i can't get a hold of Julia, she's not answering her phone. And then, you know, of course, players trying to give the good, you know, the rational excuses. Maybe the internet went out. Maybe she's just away from her phone. But she's like, no, I don't like this. Give me the directory. She's got to have a, a office line. <laughs> ah, should you not be studying? We just love seeing Chase get <laughs> bonked on the side of the head. It's hilarious. We all love it. Because that's the day that uh, Chase was going to have his little meeting with uh, Julia. And he always, she starts out, um, I want to say a professional. Oh, Miss Arjan is a, it's a, you know, agent. He's like, just call her Julia. You guys are friends. But he knocks on the door, no answer. Then he opens it and he's like, oh, Julia, are you in here? So then he gets more concerned. So he becomes more, you know, uh, friendly, not so like professional. Phone rings and then he thinks about it. He's like, mm, I better answer it. Then he's like, Instead of saying, you know, Agent Devino, he's like, uh, Julia, uh, Miss Arjant's uh, office. And we hear Carmen like, what the heck, Chase? What are you doing on the phone? It's like, Carmen, oh, what are you calling here? So they're like, both like, what are you doing here? Why are you calling? And then Carmen is, uh, she has no time for Chase and she doesn't really trust him. Not yet. I think after this episode, she does, she probably gained a lot more respect for the man. But then he's like, well, what's going on? Why are you calling here? But then he looks out the window and he starts to think, this is where... Chase is, I think he has grown so much as a character. He's like, oh my God, Julia's in danger because that's the only reason why you would be calling and she's disappeared and she's not here. Then she like straight up like hangs up on him. And I'm like, wow, that's awful, Carmen. Come on, seriously, that was her partner. Like he's going to care about her. Then, you know, players are like, oh man, what the heck? If, uh, if Val got her, then we are freaking screwed. Then she, she decides to end up calling him back. But I do like this, like, look at these pictures of Julia when she graduated. Oh, my goodness, she's so cute. Then he's thinking, well, maybe I should call this in, you know, call call Chief. But, but Julia's not part of uh, of the Acme anymore. And then that's what Karma's like, oh, we got to make sure he doesn't call Acme. Calls back, hey, you got to help me. We got to help Julia, but you got to listen to me. You got to do things by my, my rules. No Acme, and you do exactly what I say. And he's like, okay, I like how... Instead of him like arguing with Carmen, like, oh, oh you know, no, listen to you. Like, he doesn't do any of that. He's just like, I need to get Julia. She's in danger. And I don't want anything bad to happen to her. Love that. Perfect. Then his uh, little pen starts going off and he answers him like, oh, is he going to double cross Carmen? He's like, oh, he's like pretending he's sick. Oh, my throat hurts and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, I'm not going to be able to basically calling out sick for the day. But he's, of course, he's not. He's going to go to Egypt. He's going to help Carmen. He leaves his glasses behind too. So I wonder if there's like a tracking device in those. I don't know. But he left them behind. And I thought this was really nice of Chief. She's like, hey, find a deli or some nice place near where he is and send over some soup. And I'm like, oh, okay, that was really nice. What a cool boss, right? But they're like, wait a minute. They, they tracked where that phone call came from and he's in England. They're like, what? He's not supposed to be there. Then we get another agent comes in. Hey, I got the information about when, uh, because between seasons there was like a, a lull, like no one was doing anything. So they get footage of Carmen when she was in Argentina. And then Chief's like, 
hmm, the last time I was in Argentina, I killed a dude. But like, she's starting to like think about this. She's like, oh, damn, that's that's really odd that she was in Argentina. Then Julia is cracking the code for Vial because, because she kind of has to. They're going to freaking kill her. Then they kind of, you know, they do the whole breaking down the hieroglyphics and everything. Look, what a cool shot. Look how freaking awesome this is. And Chase and, and, and Carmen look great. Look at that. I, I love it. The sun setting is such a cool shot. Then we kind of get the little bit of the bonding, just a tiny, tiny bit. And he's trying to talk to Carmen. And Carmen still isn't like giving him any any real leeway. Like she's not giving him the benefit of the doubt, really. But he's sincere. Look at that smile. That is an honest to God, sincere I'm not here to try to arrest you. I'm not trying to get you because he's talking to her. He's like, what kind of thief steals things, brings them back and then helps people? Like, well, what kind of thief does that? Then she looks at him like, you know, you don't know anything about me. And he's like, he's trying to like be nice. And she's still being very standoffish. And he's like, well, is Carmen San Diego your real name? And she's like, is Chase your real name? And he, Cause he's like super proud of it. He's like, <laughs> Chase is my name. It means to pursue and capture. Like, you know, he's, he's really, really proud of that. Super funny. I thought that was a fun little cute little scene. She gets in the binoculars and says, oh, there's Julia. We got, we got to save her. But he's like, wait a second. Carmen's like, they're, they're not going to hurt her as long as they need her. And then he even recognizes freaking uh, Cleo. He's like, holy crap. I was in the same room with this woman. Uh, one of the freaking leaders of Vile. And I didn't know. And then he kind of blames himself. If I would have done something then if i would have been smart enough and more astute and arrested this woman julia wouldn't be in this situation look at the sad face because he cares about his friend chase is a good dude get back to chief and she's in argentina and they remember that bank she broke into that safety deposit box she's like carmen broke into a bank and didn't steal a single thing no but there was you know that safety deposit box which we remember had all the passports in it so Chief is putting the pieces together, and when she's going to find out that they you know because we know she killed her dad, but she doesn't know it's good. It's awesome. I love it. Julia and Cleo break into the uh, thing, so they got the cleaners with them too, and um, Tigress. So they're breaking in there, and of course Tigress is very dismissive. Hey, uh, nerdy girl, can you read this? And like she's just being super mean to Julia. Like man, I'll smack you around. But they're looking for that scarab symbol. But they find the little son, and then she tries to hide it. Oh, no, I, I didn't see anything. But, of course, Cleo isn't stupid. Hits the button. It opens up a, a secret passage. And, like, hey, Tigress, hang out behind. Anyone comes, don't let them through here. We're going to head on in. Chief gets to the uh, the box. And then she sees freaking Carmen's father. And then she's like, holy crap, that's the dude that I killed. It, she saw him reaching into Don't ever reach into your pockets when the police officer, when anyone has a gun pointed at you, don't move. You do exactly what they say, but he's like going into his pocket. And he was like pulling out. Ugh, what an idiot. He had his car keys. She saw the shine. She thought it was a gun. She killed him. Then she's thinking, what the hell was Carmen doing with this? This could have been a whole episode. How great would it have been if we would have got one episode in the stupid jungle, a whole episode of Carmen figuring out to get to, to Egypt, another episode of just Chief figuring out this plot? Three episodes right there. Oh my God, it pisses me off. But, you know, Chief is like, holy crap. This is beyond a coincidence. And I think she knows, like at this moment, I think she kind of figured it out, but she doesn't want to believe it. Uh, get back to the chamber and then Cleo just grabs some, like a cat statue, but then like the ground starts to fall away and she almost fell in and died because it's like a pit. She even blames Julia. Oh, you knew that was going to happen. She's like, well, if there are going to be booby traps and stuff like that, like, you know, I'm, I, I didn't know that was going to happen, but it's, well, <laughs> that's saying I didn't care if it did or not. But they're still looking for the treasure. Okay, there must be some other thing. There's a whole wall full of hieroglyphics. There's got to be something. Get back to Tigris. And then she opens up another door and there's a, a sarcophagus. And um, she's trying to open it up. Like, oh, there could be something cool in here. <laughs> another good moment, a bonding moment with Chase and uh, Carmen. Okay, Carmen, you make a, a distraction. I'll run and I'll sneak in there and I'll save Julia. She doesn't even say anything, you know. And then she's like, you know, it takes like, you know, sneaking around, you know, me, you. Oh, okay. You, I'll make the distraction and you go sneak in there. So he's going to go fight um, Tigress. And she's like, oh, do you want me to trim your coat again? He's like, wait a second. She's like, remember in San Francisco? Holy crap, that was you. I love that jacket. So they're going to fight. Tigress is a trained fighter. Again, he must have gone through some type of like at least hand-to-hand -hand combat, just a little bit like in police training and stuff. But he's going to fight her. And he put his life on the line because, you know, she has those claws. She's going to totally kill him. They start reading the hieroglyphics and everything. And then they realize... All the symbols is where you put the uh, items. So the the first one they found and then like the little horn thing and the eyeball. There should have been so much more to this, but they don't have the little, uh, the last item. 
and Carmen has it. And I thought this was super, super cool. She's like, give me Julia and you can have it. Have the stupid treasure. Just give me back Julia. And look at that smile. I love it. Julia's like, oh, thank you. You're going to save me. And just another reinforcement that Carmen is a good person and she's not going to sell someone out just for money. A life is a million times more worth more than whatever gold might happen to be in there. Then she's like, no, we still need her. Then we might still need her inside that room. And she's like, well, then no deal then. Well, then how about I just drop her down this pit right now? Then what if I drop this horn down this pit? Oh, you wouldn't do that. She's like, why don't you try me? Then no one gets it. How do you like that, Cleo? As much as Carmen loves life and doesn't want anyone to get hurt, Cleo loves money. So they're both at this impasse of like, okay, what are we going to do? She's like, forget it. Cleaners, go get her. Just just go beat her up and take the, the horn from her. One of them gets a taser. Fight's going on. But at the same time, you know, there's Julia handcuffed, just kind of standing around. She tries to fight Cleo, but she can't really do a good job. She's about to fall in. She gets, she gets, she gets tased. Ouch. And just so anyone knows who's never been tased before, you're perfectly fine right afterwards. You really, really are. It hurts like hell and you'll hit the ground. And, but as soon as the electricity's off and they, they, they stop, but the, the, bzz, bzz, you can get up and move around. Yeah. Is it sore? But you're, you're perfectly fine. So this whole myth of like, oh, if I shock you, you pass out. That, that doesn't happen. Get back to the fight with uh, Chase and look at him. He's got battle damage, but he's keeping up and he's fighting her. And I love this. Um, he gets hit, knocks over in the sarcophagus, and it looks like there's a bunch of like drools or something in there. And of course, she's like, oh, wow, come to mama. And it's a bunch of those freaking scarab beetles because their, their wings and shells are like incandescent. So it would look like jewels. Knocks her into the freaking thing and locks her up in there. Cool move. One, because she's stuck in there with all those bugs. Ha ha, in your face. And two, he found a way to get rid of her without having to actually like, hurt her. But good on Chase for being awesome. Then they take the horn, they open it up, and man, look at all this gold. I wish it had been something more than that. Like there would have been some type of like, I don't know, ancient technology or so, something just besides a whole bunch of gold. Like that's it. And like, oh man, this is so awesome. But then uh, one of the cleaners picks up uh, Carmen, carrying her around. All these ancient artifacts, like how great and awesome this is, but it's just money. Then then, then there's Cleo, ha, you know, we caught you. Uh, this is the end of the line. But then there's Chase, ha ha, you know, I've been here just the nick of time. And there's Julia, I was like, oh yay, Chase is here. Not the greatest person ever in a corner, but he's going to try. Look at that stance. He's like ready to fight. But then they just pull out weapons like swords and stuff. And he's like, oh crap, they're going to kill me. I thought this was awesome. Karma's like, hey, Chase, you have everything you need to, to, to that you need right now. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, the only thing that they know is that no one knows where this is. Let everyone know where, where we're at. Like, oh, use your freaking pen. Like, because as soon as that goes off, they'll, they'll have a, a GPS coordinates where they're at. He gets shot at. They went for a kill shot. She was the, the, the cleaner dude was trying to kill Chase. But then Karma gets back up, starts the fight. I do like this little dance with the sword. Like they're, they're sizing each other up. Pretty cool. I like it. But then he activates the thing and then Chief's like, what are you supposed to be in bed? He's just like, turn around, stupid. You see Carmen, you see Julia, you see Countess, Cleo, you see all this money. And then Cleo's like, holy damn it. They know where we're at. Contact authorities. They're going to be there within minutes because they're going to have security there at the freaking pyramids. She's like, all this money, it's lost. She's trying to get some of it, but the cleaner's like, we got to get out of here. It's You get thrown in jail, then that's worse than losing all this money. And I love it. I ship them. I'm sorry. I can't help it. Especially now that Chase is being a decent dude. Like, he's, he's a totally righteous dude. Well, Julia gets her all handcuffed and everything. Look at look how they're standing next to each other. I love it. It's great. They're adorable. She's abs- just the cutest little thing ever. And he's trying to be like, haha, I saved you. And he did. He did a good job, but he did it by himself. And he's like... You know, he's like, I didn't do it all alone. I had, you know, looked around. Carmen's gone. He's like, well, you know, but yeah, she helped me. So now they're both on the good. They, they understand that Carmen's a good guy. They get away. Look how traumatized Tigress is. I love it. Hilarious. She takes off. And then look at Melstrom's like, this is very unfortunate. We lost all that money. Untold amounts of money. We lost it. But look how pissed Cleo is. She's like, it's enough. She's gone too far. We're going to get her. And in the most amazingly awesome thing ever, uh, they'll go, oh, the news porters are there, the greatest find in you know modern history. Uh, how did you find it? And he's like, it wasn't me. It was all Miss Arjan here. All credit belongs to this wise woman, expert in fascinating facts and interesting things. What first led you to the undiscovered chamber? Uh, Julia, her, her smarts, her uh, knowledge of fascinating things. All, remember all the things he made fun of her about all those are stupid. Who cares about that? He praises her gives her all the credit and acknowledges her as the smart, 
you know, uh, intellectual, kind person that she is. Look at that. That is so cool. That would make her like the most famous freaking professor ever. But how awesome is that for Chase to take that sidestep instead of taking all the credit, just gives it to her because it was her who figured out how to get in there and everything. Awesome. I love it. I love these two together. It's great. She gets back to her office and then uh, Chief shows up. And she's like, you know, he's like, oh, child, I'll explain, um, you know, this everything with karma because karma still a criminal. She's like, I have no way to contact her. She always contacts me through encrypted channels, but I think there might be a way for me to get her a message because she wants to meet with her. Um, and of course it was a, uh, this is very, um, I like this, but it's also kind of like, okay, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, she made a blog about some coffee beans or something, but like every sentence or paragraph ended in a number and the numbers were coordinates. And since it was about coffee beans, all she wants to meet me at a cafe, like, okay, that's, <laughs> it's a little much to figure that out within like minutes, but whatever. But, um, there's your Carmen working out again and you know, I'll, I'll never complain. And she goes to that coffee shop. She walks in and you know, she's like, you know, I'm in San Diego, but Carmen, this scene is so good. I wish I could play the whole thing. And she's like, what were you doing in Argentina? And it's like that. She's like, oh, you know, how she grew up and everything. And she's like, shows in the picture of her father with her. And she's like, oh, damn, you were the baby. And look at this face. She, she wants to jump across this table and beat the living hell out of her. You killed my dad. Yeah, he was a criminal, but he was unarmed and you killed him. But look at this. That is a face of like, uh. She's like, oh, how were you raised? Not by my mother. And she's like, oh, damn. I mean, look at what can, what can Chief say? I'm sorry I killed your dad. Like what? There's nothing she can possibly say. But I do, Carmen's like, if I wanted revenge, I wouldn't be here. I don't know if the real line should have been, if I wanted revenge, you'd be done already. But she's like, you know what? Uh, basically gives her a deal, which I think is the most coolest thing ever. What a, I didn't even think of this. Find her for me and I'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know about Vile. The whole story. Because she used the guilt against her too. Because Carmen, oh, you manipulator. Tell you what, that uh, Veracruz, my mother, you find her and I'll tell you everything about Vile. Every little detail that I have about them, their operations, who's leading them, I'll tell you everything. You find her for me. Hey, you killed my dad. You owe me. You owe me big. What a master manipulator, Carmen. You girl, girl, you bad. But it, it it's going to work because... Chief isn't a bad person and she's guilty. She feels guilty as all sin because she did murder that man. He was completely unarmed. Then, you know, she contacts a player and she's like, oh, and he's like, yeah, it's a good move to get, uh, to get Acme on the job, basically doing this whole look for your mom while you go take care of them. She's looking at the locket. Bzzz. She gets freaking tased by that freaking drone, but she's all by herself. We get the freaking cleaner picks up thing. Oh, Carmen's R, she belongs to Vile, crushes it, and look at that ending shot. What a freaking cliffhanger. There's only two more episodes. What in the world are you going to do? It's going to be up to Zack and Ivy and in Shadow Sun to go save her, but Carmen's the one who comes up with the plans and, and, and executes them. They're going to have to step. I mean, Shadow Sun's good enough, but Zack and Ivy, I don't know. Ivy did, has, you know, solved some capers on her own, but Zack, it's time to be serious. I don't want goofy, stupid stuff like, oh man, I'm hungry. Oh, I want to eat some pizza. You gotta save, you gotta save your boss. She, she's everything. She's the, you know, she's the cornerstone of this little family of yours. You gotta do it. What a great episode. Again, I cannot get over the fact that there was three storylines, three episodes worth of content in one episode. Two more to go. Damn, what a cliffhanger. Look at that last shot. Oh, it's great. But um, yeah. To, to, am I am I wrong in thinking that there's more story here? Wouldn't everyone love to there to be a, a comic book series or something to like continue on or fill in the gaps? I would love to see the 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 faculty how they got to where they were. We learned how Shadow Sun grew up, but what about everybody else? I mean, come on, seriously, it's not that expensive to produce a comic book, but you know, I I don't know, I just love this show, and um, we're right at the end, and I'm kind of dragging my feet because I don't want it to end because once I watch the last episode, I know that's that's going to be it. But um, thanks for watching, guys. It's been great. Uh, I've been loving this series and highly recommend it to everybody. And um, catch you on the last two. You distract the cat lady while I sneak past and rescue Julia. You do realize that sneaking requires stealth and dexterity? Okay, you rescue Julia. Crimson Sin here. Thanks for watching the video. Remember, you can contact us on any of the social media platforms in the description down below. And while you're here, be sure to click on one of the videos over on the right.